Hello, welcome back, Bucket Ponds friends and family. Today we are building a new aquarium jar, a bit like these right here, but please keep in mind that every project is built as an experiment, trying out different ideas, different plants, or trying to raise certain microfauna. So please bear with me if things don't go as planned. Big thank you to our Patreons, Clay Wise, Swan C, and Jay. Uh, thank you so much, guys. It means a lot to have your support, and uh, I appreciate it. So here we have an interesting bobble. This is a five-star Dragon Ball that I found, and I want to include it in this project. This is mainly going to be a Planaria Aquarium with some snails as well, some red ram's horns. And I just couldn't help but be reminded by some Dragon Ball characters by the Planaria's ability to regenerate. So we are using a large mouth open bottle here, a craft jar is what I call them. It's a good size, it's not too big, uh, so where it would become very heavy on the shelf, but it's also not too small, uh, where it would become very volatile and possible uh, to crash easily. So we are using some uh, oak leaf litter here. I'm just going to throw that in the bottom. I haven't done this before, I'm not sure what effects it might have, but I'm hoping that it will act as a food source for worms and things in the project. We're going to cap that with some compost, but of course that is full of earthworms. Yeah, so uh, we'll just put that earthworm in another potted plant for now, and we'll throw our compost back in here. There we go. We're going to flatten it a little bit, and it's going to work out very well. So this is a pseudo wallstad style project, meaning that I'm going to have layers in my substrate. And I'm sure that people did this before Wallstad wrote her book. I wouldn't doubt it. I've seen Asian aquarium keepers doing this as a matter of habit without even understanding the term Wallstad method. And uh, I just think that's cool. But that's a good term for it. We're going to uh, build some layers in our substrate and cover it with sand. We're using our little shovel here, which is about the size of a tablespoon, and it works perfectly for this. Now, if you're not familiar with the channel, then you will uh, should know that our compost is mostly black cow and uh, organic compost from our backyard mixed together along with uh, those leaves from our own backyard again uh, but this sand is material that i collect from the earth beneath my backyard it is essentially a sand and clay mixture and it does very well at forming a cap over the compost you might be saying like why why build these layers well the compost will act as a long-term source of fertilizer foodalizer, <laughs> a fertilizer for our plants. It will act as plant food for uh, a long time. But if we added water on top of that, it would make a big mess and the water would turn black and there'd be stuff floating around. It wouldn't work. So the sand on top of that keeps all that stuff pinned to the bottom, allowing us to get the benefit of the compost without any of the mess. This sand itself also has a few interesting uh, perks. Mainly, it will increase surface area to allow more beneficial bacteria to grow. And there are some nutrients and things that are mixed in with this sand uh, that will help our plants grow as well. So, yeah, uh, you can buy sand like this at the store. You could find some play sand or something at Home Depot. That would be fine. And uh, you could also buy a bag of black cow and uh, maybe some uh, organic compost from uh, Miracle Grow. I forget. Uh, I stopped using that stuff though. I, I didn't like it so much of for a while. I can get a big old bag of black cow for like nothing and we're good to go. So now we're using our little shovel to build an incline, uh, kind of like the side of a hill into the jar. And you may ask yourself, why? Why do this? Well, and this allows us to see everything happening on the bottom of the jar much more easily from the front. It's a bit of an illusion that makes the tank look larger or deeper, and it's just a good practice to do in your various aquariums. There will be a couple uh, uh, pockets of trapped gas down there, and that's fine. This is not going to be a sealed project, so we're not worried about that. But I want to include the Dragon Ball somewhere near the middle of the aquarium. And here is our plant. We are using a tiny taro plant. Today happens to be my birthday, which I should have mentioned earlier. So, uh, woo, yeah, we're getting old. But, uh, we're going to use this taro plant in here, and of course, uh, it's about to freeze out here. We're going to have a frost, 
and that means that most of our tarot plants and things are going to fall back for the winter. So I wanted to go ahead and get this guy into an aquarium right now, you know, while I had the uh, inspiration to do so. So we're going to have to modify the substrate just a little to get that plant in there. And we're going to clean up those roots as well. Now this is a water tarot. It will do fine in a jar like this. Um, after a year or so, it might become root bound and kind of take over the tank, but that's okay. You know, we're ready for that. And we've seen that in the $10 nano aquarium. It looked really cool, so it's okay. But we're going to cover the bottom of the plant with some sand and yeah, get it planted essentially. There we go. So over time, it will reach uh, down into that compost. Once it gets access to that material, it will begin to grow and thrive. Um, that compost will also affect the water parameters a bit and release nutrients into the water, which will allow algae and other plants to grow more freely as well. So let's get into this project. I'm so happy with it so far. Uh, but yeah, guys, today is my birthday and I have a new microphone. Uh, low budget, of course, but very effective. I hope the audio has improved a bit. I want to go for a more radio style voiceover, uh, but you know, none of those guys actually sound like that. It's all heavily manipulated to make it sound like a deep voice and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we're going to include the Dragon Ball here. And to do that, we're going to use a little branch that I took from a tree in my backyard. I'm not sure of the species. Uh, I'm not really a tree guy, but you know, I'm happy to learn, and uh, we are actively learning every single day. But this will act as a little holster for our Dragon Ball. I thought about super gluing it in here, but I'd rather not. I want to go all natural in this project. Super glue is generally safe for aquariums, as far as I know. Cyanocryolite, or, or however you say it, but it should be fine. Um, I just wanted to find a different method. So we're going to have to get, try to get it into the little claw the little holster there. Sometimes these things can be a bit frustrating, you know, like planting in a narrow jar or trying to get your decor the way you want it. But don't let it upset you. You should never be upset when you're building a jar aquarium. Uh, generally, this is a very relaxing meditation type event for me. And I want that, I want you to have that as well. You know, if you get frustrated because something won't work, Set down your tools, walk away for a little while, come back. You know, don't don't ever be upset. This is your hobby. You should be having fun. So there we go. That looks perfect. Very happy with the placement there. And I should have went a little higher with the tarot plant, but that's fine. And we're going to mist it now. I want to get that sand to settle a bit. I want it to get nice and moist. That way we won't have too much of it uh, blowing around when we add the water. Uh, hey guys, you're going to kill me. I accidentally lost the footage of filling the tank, which is like the best part of the build video. I'm, I'm so upset. All right, here we are, day two. And the project looks nice. It looks really clean, really clear. And I'm pretty happy with it. You know, at this point, we got to clean it up with a little paper towel. But uh, I could add our snails in our planaria and just go from there. But I want to, I want to overdo it, <laughs> like we do. And it's just a little cloudy, so we'll pull some water out here, water the black cow aquariums and whatnot in the background, and then we're ready to add some samples. So this is a sample from my best aquarium, a 10-gallon guppy tank, which is full of endlers. It has no pumps, no filters, no sponge filter, just a little uh, air stone. And it's doing very well. Some spike rash and some duckweed. But uh, yeah, we were careful not to catch any of our endlers, of course. <laughs> I don't want to put them in here. I absolutely cannot stand people who put fish into little tiny projects. Like, okay, I get it. It's just a fish, you know, and they do it at the pet store all the time. But they do horrible things at pet stores, and that doesn't make it right. You know, if I had a beta, I would give them at least a five-gallon aquarium. That would be so much nicer and it's so much easier to work with, you know, instead of like a little cup thing. For our snails and worms, of course, they don't care. They can do well in a very small aquarium like this. And there we go. So now we're going to add some red ram's horns. These guys are one of the target species for this project. 
Um, I love these ram's horns. They were a gift from a family member and uh, my mother-in-law, actually. And uh, they're really cool. You know, I'm very happy to have them. And they will probably be with us for the rest of my life. So that's the gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> if you want to get me anything, you know, get me some snails or some worms, uh, something small and easy to care for. And uh, yeah, it'll be with us forever. But yeah, we're going to throw in about four or five of them and let them get settled. And we'll come back and throw in some food here pretty soon. So I also want to include a bit of marble. I noticed that some of the ram's horns have uh, a bit of a calcium deficiency on their shells. So I want to throw a piece of marble in here and see if that might help a little bit. It will slowly leach uh, uh, calcium into the water. It'll make the water a little bit harder over time. And I'm curious to see if the snails will congregate or gravitate near this marble chunk. So this is a bit of an experiment as well to see if they really do, you know, rasp the calcium off the stone. Uh, but we're also going to throw in a few pieces of cucumber just to get things started. This tank has no bacteria or algae inside of it as of yet. Uh, no sustainable cultures on the glass. So uh, we'll feed them a bit, a bit more regularly to start with. You see these snails, they cruise along every surface in the aquarium and they are scraping bacteria and algae off of the glass or the stone and they're consuming that. And they'll also eat uh, any food, fish food, you know, material laying around in the aquarium, of course. But uh, yeah, it's important to feed them. So my other target species here is Planaria. That's right. Now these guys are notoriously hated, especially among uh, people who keep shrimp. But uh, I'm not a shrimp guy, and there are obviously no shrimp in this aquarium other than the ostracods. But I was recording the previous podcast episode, and I really started to think about the, uh, the planaria and that jar that I showed you guys, and how I basically killed them. And, uh, you know, I understand they are pests, but I don't always feel good about doing stuff like that. And I think that these little guys are actually very interesting. They are a flatworm and they have the ability to regenerate lost limbs. I've also seen some research showing that they were able to form simple memories, and these memories can be transmitted to other planaria that consume them. It's very, very strange and very interesting, but uh, I think these guys are amazing. You can cut a planarian into five pieces, and you will have five new planaria. You can squish them against the glass, and they will regenerate. You may remember back Two years ago, I acquired some samples from Puerto Rico, and some of these uh, planaria came from those samples. But that's it for today, guys. We built a pretty cool aquarium. I'm sure it will thrive for years to come. We will come back and do an update in a month or a year. Big thank you to my Patreons, Clay Wise, Swansea, and Jay. Thank you so much. You guys, you can donate anything. Please check out the Patreon. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment, and I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching.